section and get the chat up. All right. Everyone hear me okay? Yes. Good, good. All right, beautiful. All right, cool. Well, welcome to Dialing In, everyone. Um, so for today, um, there, that'll be easier for me as well. So for today, uh, it's basically getting into the detail aspect of getting our coffee right. Uh, whenever you get a new coffee or something has changed up, you try and what we call dial in um, or uh, kind of perfect uh, the variables uh, that go into brewing your cup of coffee. Um, so uh, kind of like I did before, um, we have our Kalita wave here uh, with our Kalita vessel. The vessel is not as important. Mostly you want something that uh, won't take away from heat too much. Uh, so glass or ceramic, uh, it's typically preheated first. Um, but for this, I'll go into uh, more detail of the different variables that we have and kind of the different things to perfect, um, you know, a cup of coffee whenever you're trying to get it right. Um, so to start, I will just kind of go through, uh, like I did in the past with our pour over videos of how to brew, of just the different steps. And then from there, um, I think it'll be the easiest to just open it up to a Q and A of um, what details you guys would like more that I didn't touch on or uh, more questions on that. Um, and I can easily elaborate to a lot of the finer details and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll go there. So what I'm gonna do first, so I have my vessel. I'm going to at the same time, I always find it easier. So get your filter, put it in there nice and easy, easy, and then use uh, your hot water to seat the filter and heat up your brewing vessel. So it's gonna go through. Try to lower this a little bit. There we go. All right, so water has gone through the vessel. Okay, and we're gonna just dump it out. Cool. So we're all good there. It is now preheated, it is up to temperature. So whenever you're brewing into it, it doesn't automatically drop the temperature of the coffee. It tries to keep it at that level uh, playing field to keep all the oils intact and everything. So it still is able to open up. Uh, next, uh, you'll want to have your coffee weighed out um, for a single cup pour over, um, depending on which method you're brewing with. But for Kalitas, I'll typically recommend uh, it starts with a one to 16 ratio. And I believe uh, that this one I have dialed in is a one to 14 ratio, uh, which is uh, one gram of coffee for one or for 14 grams of water. Uh, so I have uh, 26, or no, uh, sorry, 24 grams of, uh, I'm using uh, Mapimbe, which is a coffee from Burundi. Um, super, ta super tasty, a little lighter, uh, kind of some grape notes, a little tea-like, uh, but it's a great easy sipper, um, so stuff like that. So we're gonna get a lot more uh, kind of uh, fruit notes out of it than a, let's say, a more uh, Latin American chocolatey coffee. Uh, so it's gonna be kind of light and flavorful. Um, and I already do know the dial in notes, but typically what I do, I'll always start with, uh, when you find out what your grinder's like and everything like that, you'll kind of find a sweet spot uh, to start your first cup of coffee um, to see how it tastes. Um, so with this, uh, we use our commercial grinders here because I don't have any uh, at the shop, uh, like a at home grinder. Uh, but you're gonna go with a kind of uh, a medium uh, to fine grind typically for a pour over uh, for a Kalita wave. Uh, for a Chemex actually, for brewing the Chemex, it's gonna be more coarse uh, because the Chemex filters uh, retain a lot more water and have a slower uh, brewing and extraction process. Uh, so you wanna make sure it's coarse. But for the pour over method that we're doing with this Kalita, uh, we're gonna be doing a little more uh, medium fine grind. All right, cool. So we got our coffee here. I doubt we're gonna be able to see it on my thumb, but let's try. All right, 
So it is slightly finer than coarse uh, salt. Um, it's or kosher salt. Um, it's very uniform. If your grinder is pretty good, and uniformity is the key of what you want for a quality extracted coffee. Um, so there's a lot of grinders and stuff out there that um, you know say that they're conical burrs or uh, anything like that. Um, but you know, a good grinder is few and far between uh, a general grinder. Um, so if you in, if you're wanting quality coffee, you're spending more for coffee, uh, and that's something you're really wanting to focus on, then investing in quality equipment that is typically going to be a little more pricey than normal, you know, your regular cuisine art or anything like that, um, it's well worth it. Um, you know, it's it's not worth it to pay you know 17 to 18 dollars for a bag of coffee uh, and then put it into something that's not going to brew it as consistent as you're hoping for. Uh, because you'd be missing out, out on a lot of those different things. But if you're doing it to support the farmers in the cafe, then hey, I'm all for that. You know. <laughs> um, cool. So we still have our heated vessel, our freshly ground coffee. Very important. Uh, so it is, uh, fresh coffee is always important. So it's not stale. It hasn't off-gassed uh, all of its um, kind of gases that it actually has. Um, it's still fresh, light, you know, like any produce or anything like that. We always like to think about coffee as a produce. Um, is that it has its sweet spot, it has its potential. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop that in. Uh, as is important, as I talked about ratios earlier, uh, so whenever you're dialing in, you wanna really focus in on every variable and know all your variables. So that's uh, time, temperature, uh, and weight, uh, very important. So I have my Kaya uh, scale here, which has my, gram my grammage, and timer built in. Uh, so when I'm doing this, uh, I can track as many variables as possible. So I know how much coffee I'm putting in, which is 24 grams. I know the grind size. I know the water temperature, which I keep my water temperature at 203, 204 for starting out to brew. Um, and then I know my uh, grams out. So I know how much water that I'm uh, putting into this coffee. And I uh, end that at 330. Um, Cool. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, cool. So my water is coming back up to temp after a second. Uh, also, whenever you put your coffee in, make sure you kind of give it a little shake to level it out. Um, very important because you want to try and keep it as consistent as possible while you're growing. The water's here. So my scale is zeroed out, and I'm going to start my timer at the same time. And if you remember from my other brewing methods, uh, I do a 10 second bloom. Uh, or 10 second pour, 30 second bloom, and I do a continual pour for the rest of the time until I hit my grams out. So I start, so slow 10 second pour, just to wet the coffee and open it up. Okay, put my kettle back on the heater. All right, and I pour. So a 10 second wet. Thirty seconds. Ten more seconds. And now I'll continually pour. And so what you're gonna want to do is consistent circles inward to outward. This allows you to have the, uh, let's call it uh, percolation, I'm forgetting the word, what's it called? Um, turbulence, oh, goodness, my brain's leaving me. Uh, equal turbulence uh, to get as equal extraction from the coffee as possible. Okay, and I hit my grams out. Took me about a minute for that whole cycle. And so now it's just gonna do the equal extraction process. Again, you stop at 330 grams is what we end our single cup for a pour over uh, for the 24 grams. And we're almost there. 
and I see a question from Jade. I'll get to that in a second. All right, cool. So we finished up. It took about two minutes, 45 seconds for a fleet of wave. I'll try and show you uh, what it looks like uh, for a flat bed of coffee grounds. Whenever you finish, you want to have as flat as possible a uh, bed of coffee uh, to show you that you did, you had a good consistent pour uh, for what you do. Okay, set that back up. Cool. All right, so that's done. Give it a just quick rinse, dump out your grounds, swirl your coffee to mix it in. If you can see, I have a very kind of lighter version with this Burundi being so light. Um, it's not too dark, uh, it's pretty uh, translucent, um, but we can do the taste now. All right, Let's see what we got working. Gonna be a little hot, so just give it a little second, give it a little breather. Tasty. Now I kind of cheated because I knew what this grind was, um, but honestly, this is the normal setup that I would do. Um, the Burundi's pretty versatile as far as um, dialing it in goes, uh, but for this, I got that tea like, that good sweetness, the citrusness, um, everything like that. Um, so that's wonderful. Uh, so I'll set this aside, and we can go into a little more detail uh, of everything. Transition real quick. Okay. All right. So now we'll kind of go into a Q&A time. Uh, let us uh, go to Jade's question. Uh, I know the temperature of the water matters. Does it change depending on the type of coffee or is there a general water temperature that you use? Uh, to follow, so I'll start with that question. There's a follow up. Um, um, yes, so the typical go-to temperature that I start with um, is gonna be uh, 203 or 204. Um, both of those are very versatile. Um, the SCA standard, the coffee standard is going to be uh, between uh, 195 and 205 is the kind of direction of how, how hot or not hot you can get your coffee in order to have optimal uh, extraction in any bean. Um, so that just changed from coffee. Um, if typically you have a, a little more dense of a coffee, like a Papua New Guinea, the beans are a lot smaller, you're gonna need a little bit hotter water, um, but uh, like Ethiopia or a lot of Latin American uh, coffees actually don't need as hot of water, so you can get a little closer to that 200 range. Um, typically, I always keep things around the 200 mark uh, for what I do. Uh, her follow-up question is, uh, if we don't have any way to check the temperature of our water at home, how do we get a good coffee out of a potentially too hot or not hot enough water? Um, so the typical, uh, I always recommend get a thermometer of some sort, a little electro electronic thermometer. If you don't have any, it's not too expensive. Um, you know, it's just like, uh, I think you get one for like seven bucks or something. Um, but basically the goal is uh, you heat up, you get your water to a boil and you take it off of a boil and let it rest for about 30 seconds. And usually that drop in temperature is around the 205 mark uh, for doing that. Is it consistent? Not as consistent, obviously, as a uh, you know, temperature controlled uh, brewer, um, but it is the best uh, kind of method that you can kind of get close to getting right. Cool. Um, and Brent, uh, do you want, do you want to have a consistent time for your Kalita wave regardless of what coffee you are brewing? Um, it will change. Uh, so what will change will be your grind of the coffee every time uh, for depending on which coffee you're using and how you have it dialed in. Uh, so if you have finer coffee, your extraction time is going to take longer uh, than if you didn't. So it's mostly uh, grind size dependent on what changes time for your Kalita. Um, it will always be close into the same range. You want it to finish around the two to three minute mark, uh, typically uh, for a Kalina. That was a good question. 
Um, what else? What's some more dialing in direction? Um, I'll, I'll touch on a couple as I have before. Um, so as far as variables go. So if you have a uh, too light of a coffee to where when you taste it, you're just, it's kind of papery. Um, it's not very full bodied. It doesn't taste like much. Um, then typically that means you under extracted the coffee uh, and you need to um, change up a couple of things. So under extraction, you can change it by uh, making the grind size uh, finer, which will allow smaller coffee particles to extract more. Um, and also you can slightly change your uh, temperature of the water as well. Uh, but typically I'd always start with the grind size because that's the easiest thing uh, that will usually resolve the problem. And then vice versa, if you have a very uh, bitter and strong and kind of sludgy kind of coffee if you're doing a pour over, uh, you, uh, you might have it way too fine. So you should go back it up and go a little more coarse. Um, but yeah, uh, Jay, dialing in is like a trial and error process, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so dialing in coffee is a dial, uh, trial and error process uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, and the, that is kind of the hardest thing. It's like you want a easy catch all for like, here's how to brew this coffee. Uh, but because there are you know so many variables that go into it, that's almost impossible to get everyone to brew a perfect cup with one set of uh, parameters. Uh, but we can get close, and that's where our uh, tasting palettes for the coffee come in, and uh, that's where it comes to preference as well. So you could be a person that likes a very dark and heavy coffee, and you want to use more coffee per cup than uh, is sent to you by your barista or wherever you got your coffee, um, and that's, that just comes up to preference. So it, it, it's to each his own on those platforms. Uh, but as far as uh, ratios, the golden ratio that is always taught is the 1 to 16 ratio. Again, that's 1 gram of coffee to 16 grams of water. Um, and that's, that is the standard go-to uh, for most coffee. Great question. Uh, do you need to dial it in with every new bag? Uh, even the same blend you previously used. Um, yes. Yeah, so each, I would say... Uh, every roast and uh, every roast will change. And even if we have the same coffee and uh, it's been, let's say, you know, two weeks, uh, we'll always stay on top of our dials of tasting. Basically, it's like, like at a restaurant, you always want to make sure all the food is tasting right. So every, you know, week per se, you, I mean, I'm, I'm here every day and our managers are here every day. So we're always drinking coffee and we can always tell when something's off. Uh, so if you have the, platforms in place of where you're the one tasting it, um, you'll be changing it because uh, time, so how old the coffee is, uh, temp, uh, the weather outside, how humid it is, there's a lot of other factors that come into how uh, coffee will extract and how it'll brew, especially if you're talking espresso. Uh, that's probably the highest thing that on, like it needs to be dialed, redialed in probably two times a day. Uh, a lot of the time it works like you dial in first thing in the morning and it will stay the whole day. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the dial will change multiple times throughout the day for multiple factors. Uh, but as pour overs go, um, probably every new bag that you get, you'll want to try uh, to redial. Um, but you'll know after again, because it is trial and error, after brewing that first cup, you'll know how close or not close it is. Uh, can you extract coffee with any hot liquid? Uh, yes, Josh, technically uh, anything that hits those uh, standard uh, temperatures can extract, or if you want to talk cold brew, uh, any uh, liquid would extract. Um, yes, hot soda would work. Also, you would cook out the carbonation once you heated it, but you'd get that, that uh, Coke syrup going, you know? Um, but yeah, any, any liquid will extract um, coffee for the most part. It's just a matter of how much. So if it's cold, it's not going to extract too much if you're doing it for like three minutes. But if you leave it in there overnight like a cold brew, it's going to extract, um, which is how you have um, coffee played in a lot of other alcohols, uh, coffee liqueurs, uh, tea, uh, food, syrups, anything. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very versatile. Uh, how do you know what tastes right for most people, people versus your personal taste? Ah, that is a fun, hard question. 
Um, so for myself, I have been doing it for quite a while. Um, I have a kind of extensive back, uh, culinary background in, as far as working in restaurants and other uh, food and beverage services like that. So I uh, have done multiple palate trainings of kind of different things like that. So you can go and get, uh, let's say, um, uh, QR certified. That's a, a technical term for being coffee tasting certified. Um, that's not necessary. Um, I think the biggest thing is um, kind of know your market, know what you do. So as far as let's, let's talk specialty coffee, um, typically you're going to do your own thing versus what the people want. Uh, because you will bring the people that see that your product is uh, better than the normal market around you, which will make people want to come do that, that you have put the time into your own training, uh, your own tastings and everything like that to know like, no, my coffee is good. Uh, I, know what, I know what my coffee is. And then to know in a separate category of being like, all right, I know that the major consumers are going to, they like darker roasted or heavier things like that. And you will have to make the, the decision yourself to know when to do what. Uh, those are the kind of the, the fun things. Um, like you could go to, uh, I always recommend going to a lot of cuppings and you'll know kind of what coffee, get a general sense of what coffee tastings do. Um, we host them all the time with counterculture uh, in all our common desk spaces uh, to taste uh, what the coffees taste like and to get a full litany of understanding how um, crazy some different coffees you can get. Sorry, I gotta move my phone so I can see. There we go. Um, cool. Uh, people go taste like a Michelin chef in a way. People go to eat their food. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, does that answer that for you, Brent? It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. It's like. Yeah, S what, what is it? S-K-I-L-I-E-S. I don't know anything around here. Sorry, guys. One sec in the shop. Is it a business or a person? It's a, uh, like a townhouse. Oh, yeah. Those are all going to be down that way. So there's townhouses right here. She decided to just come in here. Oh, people, sorry, we just had a person who just decided to walk into the shop when she shouldn't have, and she's just lost. I don't know. Good times. Um, she doesn't know how Google Maps work, which is more surprising. Um, uh, let's see. Sounds about right for fiction. Oh yeah, thanks, thanks guys. I'm, yeah. You know our struggles. Um, cool. Uh, what's another uh, question you guys have for dialing in? Uh, for home, oh yeah, I always recommend filter water. Uh, so even if you could use Brita filter water, uh, it will typically taste better than your faucet water heated up. Uh, little, little side notes. Oh yeah. yeah. Any other questions we think or things that we've had issues with at home trying to dial in or just not get a coffee taste right? Yes, so good good comment there, Brent. Uh, Ozarka will taste very different than RO water. Um, as you know, Ozarka is spring water, so it has a different mineral content. 
um, and different um, salinity and uh, acidity slash uh, salt content, um, which all will uh, do a different thing. So uh, we've, I've done quite a few water uh, kind of tastes uh, in counterculture, put one on a water, water uh, option. It's actually really interesting to brew uh, the same coffee, grind and everything and temperature and brew it with, you know, multiple different types of water. Uh, and you'd be really surprised how different um, all the coffees will taste. Uh, third wave, I would argue, is not worth the money unless you have expendable income that you would like to spend on your coffee. Uh, it works great and it is amazing, uh, but it is not worth how much it costs for a cup of coffee. It makes your coffee exponentially more expensive per cup. But it'll taste amazing. Any other questions? MK, do you have any questions on brewing at home or anything like that? I'm super curious how you and Cam rock it at home. Um, Cameron has really been awesome in leading the charge, but we feel really good about our pour over game and hearing all you've said on this is really good to know. We're not like too far off. Um, Lovely. But I need to work on for pour over. I was glad you mentioned this, just keeping it level. Um, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I think I'm missing for mine, but it's been good. And our mocha pot cappuccinos have really been oh, yeah. a game changer, um, as you all have seen, but we're still kind of figuring that out this morning. We made one and it was our best yet. So we're kind of taking notes on what worked. Right. But yeah, that's the hardest part, especially when you get any new gear or anything like that. It's like you, you, it will take time to find the sweet spot for it. It'll take time to figure out the dial uh, yes. for brewing on it. And I think that's the hardest part is because, you know, the coffee typically is expensive. And so if you brew one cup, it's super discouraging. And you're like, man, I wasted, you know, X amount of dollars right. on this. Um, so it's super hard. But once you, you know, as time goes on, and you get pretty consistent with it. Um, it pays off. It does. Yeah, it's been really fun. And we kind of feel like many baristas even with he does almond milk and I do whole milk and so seeing the difference in how each one froths versus yep. the other and stuff we all we like kind of knew already but it's fun to get to experience it firsthand yep so we're we're learning we're getting there you might have to hire me when this is all said and done <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful well great job I'm happy to hear y'all are doing well with the brewing. We're inspired by all of your tips. So thank yeah. you for the tricks of the trade. Well, I'm glad I can give them. Uh, oh, Brent with another question. Uh, how can you make good steamed milk without an espresso machine? The microwave in our little wand makes too much froth. Uh, yes. So one, I would, I never, I try to always not put milk in the microwave. Uh, it changes uh multiple things on a heating standpoint uh, and it could change bacteria as well and you know depending on your milk and everything like that but uh, the taste wise it doesn't always come out as as quality as you'd want um, and wands typically don't aerate let's say the coffee the way you want it to um, the only way that I could say is like the mocha pot how like MK has been doing cappuccinos um, is a good way of doing it. Um, or they also sell now a pretty good stovetop um, milk steaming wands, uh, which is basically its own steamer wand pot that will collect its own steam and you can steam it just like, well, not just like, but pretty close to uh, what you uh, would do at a coffee shop. Um, that is the best bet to get it without spending a crazy amount of money on that. Um, but it's like one of those things with using a frothing wand, you'll only get so close, but you're still so far um, from quality, uh, let's say latte, you know, shop style. Um, ooh, yeah, good hack, MK. Using a French press to froth. Good pitcher option. What else? Any other questions out there in the coffee world? We got good jams on at the shop today. It sounds some good music, putting good vibes out there. 
Spencer, I'd be curious to know just if you have a favorite bean personally. If I have a favorite what? Bean, just any roast that's your oh. favorite. Uh, so I don't know if I've said this in any videos, uh, but actually my, because I drink and have tasted many, many coffees around the globe uh, or origins around the globe, uh, I like weirder coffees, and by weirder, I mean coffees that don't taste close to what you'd expect a coffee to taste like. Uh, so I like, let's say, very savory coffees, and as well, very, uh, I guess, chaotic coffees. Uh, I think my top coffee uh, on the weirdness scale and in just enjoyment is uh, a Yemen coffee. Uh, I had it probably six or seven years ago now. Um, so not much coffee makes it out of Yemen uh, that is A, of quality, uh, and B, of uh, kind of, uh, I could use all the, the top terms, fair trade, uh, human quality of just basically not being run by the government that they're in a civil war constantly and being overrun. But uh, a coffee I had about six or seven years ago, and also Counterculture had one uh, last year. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, but a Yemen has some crazy coffee for their soil and other uh, for the elevation that they're at. Um, but it's typically a very uh, sweet, savory, and chocolatey all in one. Uh, to where basically when it's when you brew it right and you get it and it's roasted well, uh, it starts off really sweet, like a little bit of fruit in there. And then it just takes off as it starts to cool down and ramps up to a lot of nut flavor. And then it rounds out back to sweet and chocolatey and just good syrupy. Um, and so Yemen is probably my favorite. Um, it is also, you will find in a lot of grocery stores or other places like Yemen coffee. Uh, that is not, again, not what I'm talking about because typically uh, it's pretty hard to source Yemen, which is why it doesn't come through the specialty market a lot for all these specialty coffees. Uh, but a lot of main big producers uh, will have and sell Yemen coffee. Uh, next coffee shop named Kiata Coffee. I'm, I'm about that. Um, it's also very expensive. For example, the coffee that Counterculture sold uh, was $75 for a 10 ounce bag. Um, and so it was very expensive, but it tasted amazing. Um, but yeah, that's probably my easiest one. Uh, some Papua New Guineas tastes like tomatoes. I enjoy it. It's really weird. It smells like tomato soup. It tastes like tomato soup. Uh, but it's good. It's weird. Uh, let's see. Sounds amazing. Have I tried brewed cacao? And what are your thoughts? Uh, cacao, like uh, the chocolate cacao? Uh, yes, I have. I've had it at a, uh, actually while I was in Seattle, at a small batch a chocolate roastery uh, that I had some friends at. Uh, it was fine. Um, it was a little bland for what I wanted. It wouldn't be my go-to, but it also, uh, they made me another one uh, with a little more like uh, additive, not additives, but stuff in it, like uh, a natural raw honey and other stuff. Um, it was good, definitely not my go-to. Um, still like coffee more than it, uh, but it's tasty. Um, the, I think the one thing that will, that coffee brewers and roasters will always say is that, um, we are not thought of as a, you know, to charge more for coffee. Like a lot of people don't want to pay a lot of money for coffee because it's a consumer good, a quick consumer good. Um, and that's even more true for, uh, chocolate roasters and, or cacao roasters and chocolate companies, uh, because of all the other things that are chocolate. Uh, just like coffee, like folders and stuff like that. Um, so they kind of get it worse than us because it's a smaller market and there's not as many people that have caught up to it. Um, there are some great products and there's some great uh, local chocolate chocolatiers that do amazing stuff. Um, and I'm excited to see that boom probably in the next you know, five years. Uh, they'll be able to catch up to kind of where we are. Yeah. Uh, our Kenyan coffee is mostly savory. I've noticed a trend, but not sure countrywide. Uh, the ones I've tried. Yes, most of them are on the savory side for Kenyans. Uh, not all of them. Uh, what it has to do with is uh, their soil type elevation and the bean type that they're using. Um, most 
will be on the savory side for canyons. Uh, there have been some very fruity. Uh, also, the fermentation method uh, has a lot to it. So if you have a very fruity canyon that comes by, it's more than uh, more than likely going to be a natural honey process, uh, which gives it a little more volatility uh, that doesn't give it that kind of uh, level savoriness. Uh, but yeah. Great question, you know. Tried to love the good natural honey process. Oh yeah, so tasty. So, so tasty. What else we got? I like these, these are fun. See, I wish that I could always show you these in person because it's way easier to give you the finer details of the variables in person because you could see everything, but you know, I'm trying to do what I can. Here. We don't get another question here in the next few minutes. We might say adieu. Um, trying to think of anything else. Oh, question coming. Okay, Jenna, I like it. Also, I love seeing Casey there because she is, no, I'm just saying I love seeing you there because you're getting everything going again. Getting that brewer back going. Piled in. We did it. You did it? Great yeah. job. I made four drinks. One for hey. me. Hey. <laughs> Can you get different characteristics from the same bean brewed as coffee versus espresso? Oh, absolutely you can. You'll get very different characteristics from the same bean. Um, for example, you can updose something and get some very uh, thick and syrupy kind of sweeter notes, or uh, you could pull it long and get a little more uh, acidic and or uh, different uh, notes uh, for changing those variables. Um, with uh, espresso, the argument of espresso versus drip coffee is that with drip coffee, you're not always extracting its full potential uh, because of uh, time and grind size. Uh, but with espresso, there's a closer chance uh, to gain a fuller, let's call it a, a more full extraction uh, if pulled properly and proper equipment and pressure and everything like that, uh, because it has more ability to equally extract um, something. That's a great question. Can you brew two cups using a Kalita wave or do you recommend only one at a time? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you just need to adjust uh, the amount of coffee accordingly uh, and water accordingly and make sure that you have the correct sized uh, Kalita. Um, yeah, you could do, yeah, you could do two cups in a 185. It'll take more dialing in because it will not be, uh, it will not be the same dial. So say you changed it on a percentage base, it's like uh -huh. you, you can't simply just double everything. You won't have the same uh, results as your dial. So if you dialed it in as a single cup, and you just were like, all right, I want to make two cups. You double everything. It's not going to be the same, uh, and you'll have to redial for a two cup uh, process. Uh, time would be longer as well. Yes, time would be longer for extraction. That was a great question. Okay. It's a awesome. lot of questions. Yeah, that was good. I was not expecting people to have that many questions. That's awesome. It was lovely. All right. Well, if we don't have anything else, speak now or forever hold your caffeine. Um, well, wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for coming to me for a, another coffee class tutorial on dialing in and general Q&A session. Uh, keep slacking me more questions if y'all have more details or anything like that. Um, but it's super good to see you guys again. And I can't wait to see you in two weeks. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.